Okay, this is class 140 on the Golden Doves. I'm about to go running, so I apologize for the uh, sporty uh, attire. Don't mean to be uh, disrespectful. This is Torah Tendalus. We do study Torah here, um, and we study Torah, I think, in a special way, in a very intelligent way, and um, in a way that I think um, is the future of Am Yisrael, because it's, on the one hand, very traditional and authentic, but on the other hand, we look at these traditional and authentic traditions and rabbinic sayings and rabbinic um, um, works in a very modern way. So that's what makes us unique. So again, I apologize for the sporty attire, um, but it was either give no class and go running or give a class and go running. So I chose the latter. Um, okay, we are on page 78. Within the con and you remember we were talking about semantics versus um, um, uh, semiotics and about uh, different semantic systems, and um, we're continuing along that. So I just want to say first of all that um, Saucier, uh, Ferdinand de Saussure, he had the idea. And, you know, we, we, many of his ideas we, we studied and we reviewed his structuralism, but one of his ideas would, was that one day. Um, um, uh, that there would be like a semiotic system which would um, semiotics of course is a study of signs which would subsume all sign systems including linguistics including languages so everything would be understood within that overall semiotic system so semiotics would subsume everything and um, Benveniste disagrees with that and my father and I and I think most modern uh, thinkers would agree with Benveniste because, you know, okay, you have a linguistic system such as a Morse code. Okay, that's a linguistic system because it has to do with words, right? You have Braille, um, you have sign language, right? Um, now these can be translated between themselves, right? So I can say in Morse code, the word high is this, and in sign language, the word high is, you know, is the other, so there's a certain interchangeability. Um, that's linguistic systems. Now, semiotic systems are not mutually translatable and not reducible to each other. Um, so, for example, there's certain things you can say in music that you can't say in speech, right? Not everything is reducible to language, right? Um, there's certain things you can say in art that you can't say in music, right? So, uh, that, that that's where... And, and, and really, Ben Benista was the Tamir Facham of, 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 of language. He really was. I mean, and as I said, if there was a Sanhedrin and he, he was uh, fully, um, you know, religious in Shomer Torah Mitzvot, I don't, I know nothing about, you know, what he was. So I'm, I'm not going to say one way or the other. I just don't know. But he would certainly be out to the Sanhedrin because he had tremendous knowledge of languages. Um, so, okay. So let's read now page 78. So within the context of our purpose, there are six major points distinguishing semiotics and semantics, which was, um, uh, you know, based on Ben Beniste, and, and, and therefore, uh, semantics, um, which is the ma'ana of language, cannot be reducible to, or cannot be subsumed by the overall umbrella of semiotics, and that's what we're uh, studying now. Um, so number one, the sense of the semiotic is conventional, therefore it expresses the general. So in semiotics, um, you're dealing with language. Language words are conventional. That's why you can understand me. If there was no conventionality in language, you wouldn't be able to understand the words that I'm talking, right? So that's semiotics. There's convention. The sense of the semantic is particular. But when, you, when you're talking, when you're actually talking a sentence and we're actually communicating with each other, there's a semantic sense, there's a ma'ana, and it's very particular. So we're going to have a Talmudic discussion. So when I say the word Talmudic discussion, because you kind of understand me, you know what I mean by Talmudic thinking, right? Um, maybe somebody from the outside won't quite understand that, so that's semantic, that's more particular, right? Um, I'm wearing sneakers and it's screeching again. I'm sorry for the athletic um, look. Okay, number two. Consequently, the semiotic expresses only relations with other signs. The semantic expresses concrete, real um, uh, situations. So in, in semiotics, you have a certain relationship. So, so things um, have meaning relative to each other. So the word cat and the word dog, they mean something different, right? The word cat refers to 
um, that thing which the word dog and the word table and the word phone doesn't refer to. So it's, that's the word cat. So sa and the word dog refers to that thing which the cat and table and phone don't refer to, right? So, so um, there's relationships uh, between other signs and semiotic systems, right? Um, also, like in 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 uh, in, um, in language, um, the, the idea of the structure of language is is it is the, is the relationship of words between themselves. Now, let me give you, but that's in language. I want to give you like, okay, like, okay, so a traffic light. So the red light has meaning relative to the green light and the yellow light. And the yellow light has meaning relative to the green light and the red light. So I understand. Whereas when I see the red light, I'm instructed to stop. That's relative to the green light, which instructs me to go. So you see how there's relations with other signs. The semantic expresses concrete, real situations, right? So a concrete, real situation is, hey, buddy, can you move your car? The light turned green and you're blocking traffic. That, that's, that's a little more exciting than green light, right? Green light is like you're supposed to go now. But like when I say a sentence, get out of the way. People are in a rush. They got to go to work. I don't talk like that, by the way. I avoid rural rage. Um, and, um, but I'm just trying to explain the difference between semiotics and semantics. At the semiotic level, there is no initial global sense. The sense is the sum of the individual value of each particular sign. So at the semiotic level, all we're interested in it is what does this word mean? What does that word mean? What does that word mean? And that's a person, I guess, killed, that's a verb, a mosquito. So Anne killed a mosquito, right? At the semantic level, the sense, the intended um, the intended is conceived globally and then realized and divided into individual signs, which are words. So when I say a sentence for the beginning to the end and you hear the entire sentence for the beginning to the end, you know what I just said. I really didn't just say anything now, but it's only at the end that you realize I really didn't say anything. Uh, <laughs> right. But if I was to say something, you know, more interesting, I was just studying something about carbon and how carbon is a very unique a substance in the universe which allows for the formation of very large chain molecules which in turn allows for protein and life. If it wasn't for that, there would be no life. That's pretty amazing, isn't it? Um, well, that was an idea that I just expressed. And it's at the end that you kind of like, oh, he's talking about carbon, right? So you start with the sentence and you understand the sentence globally at the semantic level. And then wait, he was saying it's carbon that has a unique property. And, and what is it? Because long chain molecules, you need to form molecules. So you see in the semantic, you start with the global and then you, you reduce it to the particular uh, words. In semantics, this is uh, uh, number four. In semantics, the sense is expressed in a specific form, which is the syntagma, in contradistinction with the semiotic, which is defined by a paradigmatic relation. So uh, this is a little difficult. So in syntagmatic opposition in semantics. So you ex there's a certain form to the word. So let's go back to Anne killed the mosquito. That means Anne is the subject, the mosquito is the object. She killed the mosquito. You know what to see now. You see a live person and a dead mosquito. You can say the mosquito killed Anne. Right? So you see the, the, the form of the sentence and the syntagma, where you place the words relative to each other changes the meaning. So if you say the mosquito killed Anne, the mosquito is a subject, Anne is an object, right? What do you see in your mind? You see a deaf person and a live mosquito, right? So that's in semantics. There's a specific form to the sentence that has to do with syntax. Um, where in semiotics, you have a paradigmatic relation. You could say Anne killed the mosquito. You could also say, so you think about the mosquito. There's, or you can say Anne killed the fly or Anne killed the bee, right? That's a paradigmatic relation because, you know, basically you have an object. The object can be one of many objects. Yeah. This last point is of essence. Um, precisely because mana is not imminent to the sign, right? All right, so mana doesn't exist within the sign, right? The semantic meaning is that in the sign rather indicated by Dalala, right? My father used to talk to me about intentional semantics and extensional semantics. 
So intentional semantics has to do with semiotics. So you have a matchbox, and it says matchbox on the um, outside of the matchbox, and you know this matches inside. That's semiotics, that's intentional semantics. But then there's extensional semantics, right? Extensional semantics is you see a sign, and it says, um, you know, Yerushalayim, 50 kilometers, right? So you, you know that if you keep going eventually out there somewhere, you will get to Yerushalayim, right? So that's kind of like man, mana in Dalala. Dalala is, or in semantics, you're pointing out towards something outside of itself. Right? So we have uh, mana is not imminent to the sign, right? It doesn't, it's not in the sign, it's not inside, intentional, right? But rather indicated by Dalala, right? The mana, or the meaning that you want to bring out, is not in the sign, it's outside of the sign. It cannot acquire any sense in isolation on the basis of a paradigmatic relation with other signs. Right. So, right. Um, so there is no power. So I'm talking about Yerushalayim. You have to go to Yerushalayim, right? Um, I'm going to read that sentence again. Because, precisely because mana is not imminent to the sign, but rather indicated by Dalala, it, meaning the mana, cannot acquire any sense in isolation on the basis of a paradigmatic relation with other signs, right? So these ideas that I try to express, these semantic notions, ma'ana, there's no paradigmatic relationship, right? So I say, Anne killed the mosquito, so Anne killed the tiger, Anne killed the lion, Anne killed the person, right? That's, that's in semiotics, you can have that. But that's meaningless in semantics, right? In semantics, this idea of a paradigmatic relationship is, is nonsense, right? Uh, there is a relationship between Anne killing a mosquito and Anne killing um, a person, for example, right? So I'm going to read that sentence again. Precisely because mana is not imminent to the sign, it's not inside the sign, but rather indicated by Dalala, it's somewhere out there, it cannot acquire any sense in isolation, right? on the basis of a paradigmatic relation with other signs. It can acquire a specific, specific sense only through concrete syntagmatic opposition, right? Anne killed the mosquito as opposed to the mosquito killed Anne. So by syntagmatic opposition, I can get it. So Yerushalayim is the city of um, the Shekhinah. So I just said Yerushalayim is the city of the Shekhinah. It would make no sense to say uh, Pittsburgh is the city of Shekhinah, right? That paradigmatic uh, doesn't work. Uh, and then I think Yerushalayim is the city of the Shekhinah. It's not the Shekhinah, it's the place of Yerushalayim, right? So there's a specific meaning intended there. Okay. Right, so in, in, in semantics, the ordering of the words is essential to the meaning of the sentence and the function of the sentence as a whole requires a particular um, Sintam. Um, the semiotic implies recognition. Right? In semiotics, you just either recognize a word or you don't recognize a word. If I say the blunthin um, just uh, drunk water, like what, what is a blunthin? What, what does that mean? Or you, so you don't recognize it. So there's, there is no semiotic to that word. The semiotic implies recognition. The semantic interruption is very interesting. So in semiotics, you recognize something, right? Uh, MAGA, uh, a MAGA hat. You, you recognize a MAGA hat. You, either, you, know, you recognize it or you don't recognize it. If you recognize it, you love it or you hate it, you know, but you, it, there's recognition. But if you don't recognize it, if somebody wore, put on a, um, a, a Jubu hat, like, what, what's Jubu? I, I don't know and I don't care, I guess, right? So the semiotic implies recognition. The semantic interpretation so intelligent people can be exposed to a semantic composition and try to interpret it. Look at the painting. What is that? So you see these different colors, and it looks like a crisscross, and some dots here and there. What, what is happening here? So you have to interpret the painting, right? I'm not a big fan of these those types of paintings, but that's what it's about. Yep. Demanding respectively successive and simultaneous forms of analysis, right? So there could be a simultaneous, simultaneous synthesis, successive synthesis, depending on the type of composition. It could be a musical composition. You might have to do both. 
Finally, number six, the dialectical nature of negation implies a semiotic system. The dialectical nature of negation. So, what is the dialectical nature of negation? So, it's either yes or no, right? Right, so it's yes or no. So, dialectical nature of negation implies a semiotic system. So, the way you, 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 the way you um, resolve negation is by recognizing the semiotic and say, ah, it's this, but it's not that. It's a dog, it's not a cat. It's a table, it's not a chair. It's a spoon, it's not a fork. That's a dialectical nature of, uh, of negation. It's not a fork, it's not a spoon, it's not a bowl, it's a knife. Right? That's a semiotic system. You negate other um, signified from that signifier. Right? That's in semiotics. This becomes evident when one realizes the binary character of semiotics. Binary, it seems to me, now he's quoting Benveniste, is the semiological characteristic par excellence, first in language and then in all other behavioral systems, born in the midst of social life and participating in a semiological analysis. Right, so one of the um, issues that Benveniste discusses is that language and society are pre-existent to man. And therefore, man is born within the language, and man is born within society. That's why he speaks a lot about society so, and language and the, relation between, the relationship between society and language. I'm going to read that sentence again. Binary, it seems to me. And one of the things that um, uh, Jack Diddy Doug does, he goes against the binary and he tries to deconstruct the binary. But you have man and woman. Man is not a woman. Woman is not a man, right? You have rich and poor. That's a binary, right? You have inside and you have outside. That's a binary. You have female and you have male. That's a binary, right? A lot of the nonsense that's being spewed today is an extension of uh, Jack Diddy Doug's attempt to deconstruct these binaries. So binary, it seems to me, is a semiological characteristic par excellence. First, in language. So in language, you always have these oppositions. It's this, but it's not that. It's dark and it's not light, right? It's up and it's not down. So that's binary. First, in language. And then in all behavioral systems. It's a father and then it's a mother. It's a daughter and then it's a son, right? Those are sociological systems. We have the binary, right? Um, because of its syntagmatic character, right? Because its daughter was born to the mother, right? In a semiotic situation, negation is differential. This will become clearer upon our analysis of the concept of negativity in Maimonides. So let's put that on the side for now. Till next time.